Welcome to The Naked Photographer. Today we're starting a four-part series on the basics of camera exposure. Today's video is part one, film speed. Whether you're using film or digital, the correct exposure is going to have three parts. Sensitivity, duration, and intensity. Sensitivity is controlled by ISO or film speed. There's recently been a few videos about how digital cameras and the ISO settings are different depending on the brand that you use or the model within a brand as much as one stop. And there's been an argument that there is a conspiracy to inflate the available ISO numbers to make cameras look better on paper. I think this comes from a misunderstanding of what ISO is. So let's first, before we look at what constitutes ISO for both film and digital, a little bit of history of where it comes from to begin with. In 1918, a group of engineers got together to form a group called ASA, or American Standards Association. One of the things that they decided to tackle was film speed. The organization as a whole was meant to standardize different things for engineering, such as the size of a bolt. So in 1954, they decided to standardize film speed, and they wrote a document called ASA PH 2.5, which defined film speed as we know it today. Before that, there were a series of different film speed scales depending on what camera you got, what film you bought, or what light meter you had. It could have been the Western film speed scale. It could have been the General Electric film speed scale, and they were different. So ASA wanted to standardize everything across manufacturers of film, meter, and camera. So they came up with a scale that we know today, and we'll cover that scale in just a moment. In 1969, ASA became ANSI, A-N-S-I, American National Standards Institute. They, however, did not continue with the film speed scale. Instead, they deferred to the International Organization for Standardization, which we know as ISO. Now, I know you're thinking that should be IOS. Well, ISO is actually not an acronym for the organization because they understood that different languages would have different acronyms. So instead, they chose to use a shortened version of the Greek word ESOS, which means equal. So whether you call it ESO, ISO, or ISO, you're all referring to an organization that makes standards across a, a bunch of different disciplines. One of those is film speed. They created uh, document ISO 2240 colon 2003 to define film speed for actual film. Now there's another group, a German group, called uh, Deutsche Institut für Normung, which is the German Institute for uh, Standards. <clears throat> they have a completely different scale, and that uses the nomenclature of a temperature degree symbol. So you might see a 100 speed film, such as T-Max, with the 100 on the package, but then slash, and then a temperature, which uh, for this particular film would be 21. So it would say 100 slash 21 degrees. The 21 degrees is not the temperature you would develop your film at. Instead, that is the designation for the German DIN film speed scale. They use a logarithmic scale, whereas ISO and ASA used an arithmetic speed scale. And we'll talk about those scales again a little bit more in depth later. When it comes to digital, ISO created document ISO 212232 colon 2006. And that defines how digital cameras would have film speed assigned to them. And whereas film has one method, which is to expose film in a machine called a sensitometer, 
to a step wedge, which is a piece of film with particular increments from clear to fully dark. The film is exposed in the sensitometer to this. It is then developed uh, in a solution very similar to D76. And then the resulting step wedge created on the film is read on a different machine called a densitometer, which shines a light through the film and the density of the film is read in a logarithmic scale. They are looking for the patch that reads closest to 0 0.1 above the uh, base itself, uh, called base plus fog. And the patch that reads 0 0.1 designates which film speed is going to be. Digital, on the other hand, because it doesn't actually expose any kind of film and there's nothing to read on a densitometer, ISO created a different method for digital. In fact, they created five. And depending on which one the camera manufacturer chooses to use can actually have a different result. So if you're shooting a Canon, they may have used one different method than Sony or Nikon or Hasselblad. They are not required to use all five methods and they don't have to disclose which method they use. They can use, there's three basic methods and then two variations uh, to create five total. They can either look at a noise-based method, which is signal, signal to noise per pixel uh, ratio to determine the film speed or they may have a max exposure that does not clip the highlights. And then the third method is uh, an sRGB file that produces an 18% gray when exposed to a very particular standard image. So any of those methods can be used and they create completely different exposures and they may not match the same exposure as film. So depending on which one your camera manufacturer uses, you might get a different result. But let's talk now about what ISO actually does for you and the scale that's involved. Because now that it's standardized, you're going to have the same scale regardless of what camera, film, um, or setup you have. So the ASA or ISO scale starts at uh, one and then moves up incrementally with each resulting number doubling the film speed. Now some of these are rounded off. Today's film, the lowest that you're probably going to find may be uh, 25. And then the next film speed up from that, which would have twice the sensitivity, would be 50. And then the next film speed, like this, would be 100. Then 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200. And I believe there um, is no film faster than 3200 manufactured today, but it used to go up to 6400. <clears throat> Digital will use the exact same scale, each one resulting in uh, one stop more sensitivity every time the number is doubled. Now there are film speeds in between, typically in one third stop. For example, 100 is was considered a whole stop. Then you would have 125, which would be a third of a stop uh, more sensitive. Then 160, then 200. And there are films that match this. This is T-Max 100 from Kodak. Ilford FP4 is a 125 speed film. Kodak Portra 160 color negative film. And then there's 200 which uh, I think Berger makes a 200 speed film, or last I remember. What these denote is, for film in particular, there are tiny little crystals of silver salt in the emulsion of the film. The lower the number, the finer or smaller the crystals are. So this would have a very small crystal in the 100 speed, and 3200 would have a very large crystal. And how this matters, is think of it like playing darts and you have a target. If you have a very small target, it may take a lot of darts thrown at that target for one to eventually hit it. If you have a very large target, 
then you wouldn't have to throw as many darts at that target to finally hit it. And it's sort of the same with this. Photons are going through the camera lens and striking the film. A 100 speed being smaller targets would require a lot more photons to strike the film. Whereas a large target like a 3200 speed would not require a lot of light in order for one of those photons to strike the crystal. The results, however, can be very different. Because of these being finer crystals and these being larger, the resulting photograph is going to show that. So if you want a very smooth tone, fine grain image, you need to choose a fine grain, small crystal film, which is a lower ISO number. If you want a larger grain, then you would choose a faster speed film, like 3200. You have very different visual results. For a digital camera, the results, instead of being grain, would be noise, which are pixels that don't have image information and instead are just blown out colors. So it would look like little specks of red, blue, green, yellow throughout your image that don't match up with the tones of what's being photographed. The higher the ISO number, the more noise there's going to be in your image. The lower the number, the less noise. One other reason you may choose one speed over the other is because of the available light that you may be shooting in. For example, if you're out in bright sunlight, you may decide that a 100 speed film, because it requires a lot more light, would be perfect for outdoor sunny scenes because you have plenty of light coming into the camera. Whereas if you're going to shoot indoors or perhaps at night, you might want a faster, higher ISO film. That way, you're ensured to get a good exposure without extra long shutter speeds. In part two, we're going to look at how the shutter speed affects your image. And in part four, we're going to look at how all three parts of the exposure come together for you to then make the correct exposure for your image. So if you're unsure yet how film speed affects your image overall and all three variables, don't worry, we're going to cover that together in parts two, three, and four. Just for the purpose of this, remember that film speed is going to control two things, the graininess of your resulting image, either in film speed, grain, or in noise, and how sensitive your medium is to light. So if you need something for a much dimmer uh, scene, then you will need a much faster speed or higher number. And then for bright images or bright scenes, a slower speed may be more appropriate because you're going to have to control everything with parts two and three which we'll cover next. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the rest of this four-part series on the basics of photographic exposure.